Have mercy on us, O Lord. Have mercy on us, for we are exceedingly filled with contempt. The psalmist wasn't content to only wait for mercy. He begged for it. He demonstrated that waiting on the Lord is not a passive thing. He repeated the, the request for mercy, showing the intensity of his plea. Sometimes others show contempt to us, and it just rolls off like drops of water off a duck's back. Other times we take contempt from others, and we let it fill us. Sometimes until we are exceedingly filled, bursting at the seams and oozing out. Times like this bring us down and make us feel that only the mercy of God can save us. That all-important mercy. Verse 4. Our soul is exceedingly filled with the scorn of those who are at ease, with the contempt of the proud. This scorn is never easy to bear, but is especially painful. It hurts when it comes from those who seem to be at ease, who seem to have few problems or difficulties in life. In being proud, this made the contempt to them even more. All proud and arrogant. This Jewish poetry, as he writes it, he writes down what he's feeling. And I'm sure we've all felt this. Those who think they're much better than us and look down at us from their noses, from where they're at, whether they have a, a leadership position or they just think they're much better than us. And this is what he's feeling. He's asking the Lord to have mercy on him. When we feel that, when we feel like we're taking all that garbage from somebody, seek the Lord. Because it's going to come. The devil's going to attack. And we're all back to them words and the tongues. The daggers are coming from someone's mouth. You're going to hear it. Seek the Lord. Seek the Lord. There's no magic word. There's nothing that's going to stop. Seek the Lord. Ask for his help. Ask for his guidance. People are going to attack. People are going to say mean and nasty things. People are going to make up stories. People are going to think they're better than you. Seek the Lord. Ask him to give you grace. Ask for mercy. Help me to deal with this person. Even when you get angry, frustrated. Lord, help me. I'm having a really hard time with this. I'm being attacked, I'm saying false things, I'm saying, Lord, help me, guide me. All right, moving on to Psalm 124. This one is most likely written by our King David. If it had not been the Lord who was on our side, let Israel now say, verse 2, If it had not been the Lord who was on our side when men rose up against us. Twice in the first two verses of this psalm, David called Israel to recognize that their help was in God alone. It wasn't just that Yahweh, or God, was present but that he actively worked on behalf of his, his, his people. Let Israel now say, David thought it necessary that all God's covenant people recognize this. It wasn't enough for he or a few others to do this. It was the duty of all Israel to know and to say that God was their absolute essential help. Do we say that? Do we say that God helped me? Thank you, Lord, for you give him the praise for helping you do something, finding something, getting a lug nut off a vehicle. Let us change our minds if we're not. Lord, thank you for doing it. Thank you for helping me. Let us remember that everything good comes from God. 
Amen. Only evil comes from the devil. Amen. Let us remember. Lord, thank you. I'm walking. Amen. Thank you for, you know, thank God for the little thing. Lord, Lord, I'm still breathing. Lord, I still have two eyes. Lord, I'm still here. Oh, let me dwell in a little bit. Oh, Lord, I can't hear very well out of this ear. I'm still here. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. You know, change of pro thought process. Thank you, Lord, for what I have. Thank you. You know, Lord, we have this building we can, we can praise you in. Thank you, Lord, for that. It's near a highway. Thank you, Lord, for that. We prayed for that specifically. Lord gave it to us. Amen. Praise God. Amen. It was an answered prayer. Amen. We have people in this church. Praise God. For a long time, Amen. there was very few people. Praise God. There's people Amen. coming in. People, praise God. People seen the sign outside. Hallelujah. People read it. They came in. Hallelujah. Praise God. Yeah. There's so many answered prayers. We ask for God's help. He helps us. Yeah. There's so many things. Let us not forget. Verse 3. Then they would have swallowed us alive when their wrath was kindled against us. The nations intended to, intended to destroy life, which God had given to his people. The verb swallowed is a metaphor for death. Death is often portrayed by Sheol or hell that devours its victims. Those who ally themselves with it are instruments of death. As they, as it were, swallowed up those who were alive. However, life granted by the Lord cannot be smothered out or put to death. If God's given you life, you're going to have life. Let us not forget that. Amen. Okay. Verses 4 and 5. Then the waters would have overwhelmed us. The stream would have gone over our soul. Then the swollen waters would have gone over our soul. David poetically described their potential ruin. The danger was like being drowned when waters overwhelmed you. The violent acts are linked to the flood, the torrent and the raging waters. The metaphor of water as a destructive force is common where in the Old Testament because of the destructive torrential rains known to that part of the world. Oh, do we know another thing that happened with rain? <gasps> Like 40 days and 40 nights. <gasps> oh, guess what? Because of rain, we have oil. You guys realize that? Because of rain, we have oil. Right, Pastor John? Yeah. And that, that could be another study sometime. Hmm. Yeah. Ask me. If you don't know why rain caused oil, ask me or Pastor John and we'll tell you. That's another story. And that's the rest of the story someday. All right. Praise God. Verse 6, verse 7. Blessed be the Lord, who has not given us as prey to their teeth. Our soul has escaped as the bird from the snare of the fowlers. The snare is broken, and we have escaped. As in other places in the book of Psalms, the thought is not bestowing a blessing upon God, but on thanking and praising and announcing him as blessed. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Amen. David again described their danger poetically. First as being delivered from a beast with grinding teeth, then as deliverance from a trap or a snare, separate birds. God, it is his doing. Therefore, he is to be praised. It is God who is saving them, and he is praising them. Verse 8. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. Our help. We sense a bit of defiance in the declaration. The nations find their supposed help in their supposed deities. God's people confidently find their help in the name of the Lord God Almighty. The future lies in God's caring hands. He is our help by his name, or Yahweh, we will be protected, so we need not fear. <laughs> After all, the maker of heaven and earth is in control over all which he has created. God has created everything. The air, 
the stars, the moon, the sky, the trees. God is in control of everything. You know, when we, when we all die, if we know him and we have a relationship, we have a glorious place waiting for us. And when all this is said and done, and that mansion's in the sky, and we're praising him forever, there's no other place I'd rather be. It's going to be wonderful. And I pray that there's more people there. I pray that we're sharing and talking and and they're calling us Jesus freaks. Who cares? This is so important. This is life and death. This is something we need to talk about. Let us share the message. Let us talk to our friends. God loves us. He has a plan. He's always had a plan. There's nothing nothing new to God. There's nothing going to surprise him. But we need to talk. We need to open our mouths. We need to be all in. Sometimes we need to shut up. We just need to put God first. Oh, praise the Lord. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is so good. Shut it off. All right. So now that we're done.